What is going on guys? It's the Mad Dragon. The Six Nations is coming. I'm getting extremely excited for it. The hype this year has been awesome. The teams are being announced for who's going to be playing this weekend. So we need to do a preview video for those of you new to the channel. In the preview videos, we'll be checking out the official teams that have been named for both teams going to be taking part in this game. Having a run through of the players' names, go over who's some good picks, some bad picks, some thoughts on how we think the teams might play, and finally giving a score prediction. If you like this sort of content, make sure to like the video and subscribe to the channel because there's going to be a bunch of Six Nations views coming out over the next few weeks. And as always, make sure to drop down in the comment section your thoughts on the teams because it's really fun to see what you guys think as well. So taking a look then at the teams, Wales versus Ireland. It's sent to be a really big game. First game for Warren Gatland back in. A lot of expectations. I've seen some people through comment sections and on Twitter and on Online. People are people are calling this game as like a 20, 30 point Wales win. I feel like expectations are maybe a little bit too high for some people. There's an awful lot of bounce back needed from this game last year. If you remember this one last year, Ireland demolished this game. And as as a Wales supporter, that was a, that was a tough watch. Uh, I think it was 29-7 in the end. And I remember thinking. Wales were very lucky to get seven in that game. So Wales will have to do a mega U-turn to come back for this game. But Wales do have quite a good record at winning at the Principality over Ireland. So we'll see how they get on. The Wales team that's been announced pretty much... What I expected, if anyone saw the squad announcement, I sort of came up with my 15. It's pretty much bang on. There was one change which I expected. Two, though, have caught me slightly off guard. So let's have a run through them. In the front row, then Gareth Thomas alongside Ken Owens as captain and Tom Francis in that tight head position. Now, Gareth Thomas coming in. Um, I did think Wynne Jones would be potentially the number one choice at loose head. They've gone for Gareth Thomas. I'm still not sure about his current sort of fitness status of Wynne Jones. And I think Gareth Thomas will fill in quite nicely. So hopefully they can do well, especially seeing Ken Owens as captain. Really looking forward to seeing that. In the lock department, uh, Adam Beard and Alwyn Jones. That is a combo we've seen a lot, not just through Wales with Gatlin running that, but also when he went off with the Lions. We saw that going on a lot. They'll be sort of implementing similar tactics, I imagine, in that line-out situation. They work very well at trying to shut down as much of that spring box line-out and draw driving more. The way they were getting influence in that was important. Ireland, another mega team at the lineout and the driving mall. So I thought that was probably the partnership we were going to be seeing. The back row, uh, Gallon agrees with me. So I'm feeling happy about that. Jack Morgan gets in in the number six shirt. Justin Tipper gets seven. And Falatau in that eight shirt. It's so nice to see that Jack Morgan is in there. Not just based on being an old name, but based on actual talent. He did so well last year. Coming back into this team, gets the starting position. Still low on caps. Mega game up against Ireland at home. Opener of the Six Nations. So nice to see him in there. Really looking forward to seeing more from him. In the halfback partnership, Thomas Williams alongside Dan Bigger. This was the one I sort of expected it to be. Uh, Gatlin's obviously gone back to picking a lot of the players he's used to playing with and the team he was more comfortable with rather than just throwing all the new boys in there. So it's pretty standard setup as you'd expect. I did think adding Reese Webb in at the start might catch a few of the Irish players off guard. I expected Thomas Williams to probably be starting, but I thought they might have gone for a switch up there. Dan Bigger no longer captain of this Wales team, but I'm really hoping that allows him to just sort of settle down and focus on his own game. In the centre partnership, someone that I didn't expect to see in here for the first game, Joe Hawkins getting in in the inside centre. Now, alongside this, there's also no Tompkins named on the bench, which is sort of what I expected. I expected Tompkins to be in this team, so I'm not sure about fitness status for him at the minute but George North in that 13 shirt so again not what I expected I really thought Gatlin would want to play George North like he used to do with Jamie Roberts similar stature similar size similar technique of just running over players I thought they'd try and move George North into the inside center similar to how Gatlin used to love seeing Jamie Roberts play uh, but George North going to retain that outside centre. But looking forward to see Joe Hawkins get a star. Hopefully he can have a good game. And then in that back three, Rio Dyer takes the left wing. Josh Adams taking the right. And one last minute change. Uh, Lee Halfpenny has gone out with a back spasm. Uh, so Liam Williams moves into that starting fullback show, which a couple of people were surprised to not see him named there anyway. I think if he was fully fit, 
I'd sort of be expecting to see him there. Um, Josh Adams taking the right wing because he's more versed to being able to switch wings. I've only seen Rio Dyer play left wing. Not sure how comfortable he was with switching, so that's what I sort of expected. No Zamet. There was talk uh, about his fitness level, whether he got over a little bit of an injury. I did see he put out a little tweet, though, about uh, Delilah is now banned by the WRU, which has had quite the uh, quite the backlash. I don't think that's necessarily fixing the things people want to see fixed in the WRU, and I'm hoping that it's the fitness angle as to why Zamet's not in this team as opposed to some sort of political dispute in the WRU. Seems like even the players are getting a bit fed up with the WRU at the minute. But nice to see Josh Adams. Hopefully he'll make a big impact on that right wing. And Liam Williams, hopefully fitness going to hold out. I feel a bit sorry for Lee Halfpenny, unfortunately. They're not going to be getting in. Keeps getting into this Wales team and just those injuries taking him out of it. Uh, in terms of the replacements, then, Scott Baldwin comes in in that replacement hooker. There, of course, Derry Lake went out with that injury after the initial squad was named. Such a shame for him, but Scott Baldwin will see how he does back in a Wales shirt. Games can be a bit 50-50 for me. We'll see how he gets on. Alongside of them, we've also got Rhys Carey and Dylan Lewis. So it's a strong setup there of front rows to come in. Um, I feel like I'm more confident in the starting front row as it stands. I still feel Ken Owens is on a different level in terms of hookers in Wales at the minute. So I'm sort of glad with how they've got that arranged. Uh, rest of the replacement forwards then. David Jenkins getting an opportunity. I'm really hoping... If we're not seeing Alan Wynn necessarily make the impact that he used to a few years ago, I'm really hoping we get to see someone like David Jenkins get on quite early into the game. Maybe even after half time, maybe as early as 40, 50 minutes, let him get some game time against a big team like Ireland. And then finally, Tommy Raphael, um, who might be a bit annoyed to not get in the starter team. Yeah, he was playing so well last year as well before he had to go out. Uh, but nice to see him back in this team. I'm really kind of hoping we get to see... Jack Morgan and Tommy Raphael play together. A bit more of a, a youthful flanker section for this Wales team. And then the replacement backs, Reese Webb, Owen Williams and Alex Cuthbert. Um, Cuthbert, of course, going to go on to a wing. You can always move Josh Adams to the centre if it goes that way. I'm guessing Josh Adams is being looked at here as the man that needs to cover basically everything. Um, if there's an injury to centre, Josh Adams is going to have to move to centre. If there's an injury to wing, Cuthbert can cover the wing. If there's an injury to fullback, I assume Josh Adams is the one again that's going to be chucked at fullback. Maybe you put Dan Bigger at fullback and Owen Williams on. Um, tough call there. I'm sure there's, there's enough versatility they can sort of get around injuries. Uh, but I feel like if they have an injury to Josh Adams and then another one, they're, they're in desperate trouble of trying to work that one out. So... Um, it's an okay bench. It's certainly a better starting 15 uh, than the bench to me. We'll see how they get on. Wales, of course, with a good home record against Ireland. I'm sure it'll be a good game. Talking of Ireland then, let's move on to see this Ireland team. If anyone's seen the prediction video, this is the team I've sort of hedged my bets on to go on to win the Six Nations. And the team that has been announced is the way to sort of start this off. This is a mega team from Ireland. We've sort of seen them having a bit more of a streamlined team over the last year. Similar picks. They're really gelling together before that World Cup. Um... And this just seems like an enormous team to me. Starting off in this front row, Andrew Porter, Dan Sheehan, Finley Beelham. Yep, that's what we sort of expected. No um, Tyg Furlong in there. There was uh, questions about his fitness. You know, he'd missed quite a few games um, leading up to the Six Nations. So there was talk about whether he would actually get a start. Finley Beelham comes in over Tyg Furlong. A um, couple of people might be surprised about. But I think Finley Beelham is one of those sort of underrated players that hasn't really had the opportunity to show off quite what he has because you've got someone like Tyg Furlong taking his place. But I still think that's a very strong front row. In the lock department, Tyg Byrne and James Ryan. Um, again, the, the, the line-out situation hasn't been the best for Wales over the last sort of eight, months or maybe longer to be fair it feels like it's going that way I feel like Ireland are certainly one of the best teams in the world I mean, in terms of their lineups Tyburn and James Ryan both being a big part of that in the back row Peter Omani Josh van der Fleer and Keelan Doris we've seen these three play extremely well together I'm liking Keelan Doris at eight I think he's playing extremely well I would keep him there I know they sort of move him Blanket to number eight. I like him at number eight. I keep him there. Josh van der Fleer, named as, you know, player of tournaments, player of the year, just getting everything. Man, this is just such a mega set of forwards for the Irish. Um, I think that's a great one to eight. I think they'll feel very comfortable in that set piece area. In the backs then, Jameson Gibson Park comes in alongside Johnny Sexton. This is the, the halfback partnership I feel like we expect now. Connor Murray, higher caps, higher experience, but Jameson Gibson Park just impressing that a little bit more. Johnny Sexton as the captain. 
Not sure if it'll be his final year in terms of international rugby. I haven't heard a lot about retirement stuff, but he'll want to make sure he gets to that World Cup injury-free. But such a committed member of the team to try and keep them, them moving forward and getting those wins lead from the front. It's nice to see. In the centre partnership, Stuart McCloskey comes in alongside Gary Ringrose. I'm really excited to see this. I can imagine a lot of people want to see Bundyaki take that, but... Stuart McCloskey is an absolute unit. Um, and I feel like a lot of this game is going to be about pressure. The games I'm sort of seeing Wales lose is because they're just having constant pressure put on them from big players running at them directly, one off and again and again and again. And eventually the cracks begin to show. Someone like Stuart McCloskey is such a dangerous power runner. You're committing two players potentially to tackle him if he's at a full head of steam. That just opens the gap for someone like Gary Ringrose to find room and just sort of run around you. I kind of like this situation. I think that's a good centre partnership. And then finally in that back three, James Lowe comes back into the side on the left wing. Mac Hansen on the right wing and Hugo Keenan in that fullback. Ever reliable. Doesn't score a lot in terms of the fantasy. Not a lot of people talk about him. I think Hugo Keenan's, again, quite an underrated player in that fullback position. He very rarely has a bad game in fullback for Ireland. Um, 1 to 15, solid for Ireland. Um, I think this is an experienced team. They're obviously trying to lay down a marker. They're obviously aware of the home advantage Wales will have in this game. Get in there, start your Six Nations off strong. I think it's a good move. In terms of the replacements, Rob Herring comes in alongside Keen Healy and Tom O'Toole. Looking forward to see a bit of Tom O'Toole in this Irish side again. Tight head prop. Tough area to uh, get your name in there, but Key and Healy coming in alongside Rob Herring. Again, good experience there in terms of the replacement front rows. Rest of the replacement forwards, Ian Henderson and Jack Conan. They've gone for the 5-3. A little bit of me did think they might go for the 6-2 here and just go for their experienced power forwards. A couple of driving mall tries, go through the phases, try and put Wales on the back foot. Keep that breakdown zone, you know, really in the Irish favour. They haven't gone for it, gone for the 5-3, so it might be seeing a bit more of an expansive game, which I'm looking forward to. And then the replacement backs, Conor Murray, Ross Byrne gets his chance. Can Ross Byrne have an actual chunk of game time rather than the last five minutes? We all hope so. And finally, Bundyaki there to replace in the centre. So in terms of coverage then, of course, Bundyaki will be moving into that centre. I'm sure Stuart McCloskey will go off, uh, you know, 40 minutes, 50 minutes, maybe towards the 60-minute mark if they'll want to get Bundyaki in. For the impact he sort of has into the game. Um, coverage in terms of wingers potentially looking a little bit a little bit wobbly there. I think Ross Byrne has been more than happy to also move back into fullback if you want him to. If there is sudden devastation injuries, you've got Conor Murray can actually play at fly half as well. So there's some good coverage there. The wingers is one area. I mean, I'm sure someone like Conor Murray or James Gibson Park, you can chuck out on a wing if that's how it goes. Uh, but no sort of dedicated winger for me that would sort of slot into wing if there is an injury in that regard. Um, but that's what I mean. I feel like I was going to see Ireland play a bit of a tighter game anyway, not expansive play. But James Lowe, Mac Hansen, give them room. Give them room. There's the opportunity for some really big points. So what do we think going into this game? Then I think this one could be a real just gritty sort of game. I think we might see this open up. I think there could be the opportunity for some good points here. Of course, if you aren't already, the fantasy is up on the channel. Make sure you're getting your picks in with the teams being announced today. Um, what do we think in terms of a score prediction then? I'm I'm still leaning towards Ireland for this one. I know the Wales home record is very good against Ireland. Ireland have got a tough year this year in terms of the games coming up and where they're being played. I think they want to get off to a strong start. I'm going to say Ireland to win this one. Um, I think we might have a very close first half. I think both teams will just sort of feel each other out. But it might be when you see those sort of Wales subs going on versus some of the Ireland subs. I think towards the end of the game is where Ireland might begin to pull away. I'm going to say Ireland to win. And I'm going to say by 11. I think that's what I'm going to go for, guys. So make sure you do drop down in the comments who you think will win and by how much. And like I've said already, make sure you've got it on the Predictor series. You're part of the Predictors and make sure you're picking your fantasy players, including your captains for the fantasy. Those videos will be coming out on Monday along with the world rankings. So make sure you are subscribed to keep up to date with all the latest videos as they come out. I hope you've all enjoyed this one today, guys. I will see you all next time. Bye-bye.